The air was thick with darkness, clouded by swirls of black smoke. A haunting display of fiery flames danced around, and the scent of burning debris was palpable. Everywhere, blood was splattered like an abstract painting of despair. Amid this hellish scene, our protagonist, Dr. Jean, found himself caught. His thoughts raced, perhaps humans shouldn't stray from what they're accustomed to. How did a simple job recommendation from a colleague lead me to this calamity? The scene abruptly transitions to a pristine hospital corridor, where two doctors are engaged in a conversation. One of them, Dr. Jin's co-worker, eagerly approached him, Hey, Dr. Jean. The dispatch orders for medical volunteering are out. Let's go together. You're coming, right? Jean looked perplexed, his eyebrows knitting together, why would I voluntarily go to a place where I'd be whenever I surrounded by suffering and pain? He paused, reflecting, thinking back, it never turns out well collaborate with you. His colleague tries to persuade him, emphasizing, it's a valuable experience. I'm even signing you up alongside me. Jean retorted, clearly irritated, I already told you, I'm not going. Despite his protests, I told you, I'm not interested. Dr. Jean couldn't foresee what was about to come. Who would have thought that the place he was headed to volunteer would be engulfed in a violent civil war? In the midst of the chaos, Dr. Jean shouted above the cacophony, there's no more space to lay down the patients. He tried to remain composed, reminding himself, no matter the circumstances, I must do my duty. I'm a doctor. The camp was frantic. Medical supplies were running out, and the injured were increasing in numbers. Do we have any more hemostatic? Jean yelled desperately. A voice replied, laden with hopelessness, the one I just handed you was the last. The weight of responsibility bore down on Jean. He took a deep breath, constantly repeating his mantra, I'm a doctor. This is my duty. As if things couldn't get worse, the rebels began to overrun the camp. The tension was palpable as the sounds of their footsteps grew nearer. Suddenly, the tent flaps were violently thrown aside, revealing a rebel with cold, calculating eyes. He aimed his rifle at them, ready to unleash death. In that chilling moment, Jean stepped forward, eyes filled with defiance, damn it, no. It was infuriating that he, a doctor sworn to save lives, felt so powerless in this moment. The rebel's finger tightened on the trigger. As bullets raced towards him, Jean closed his eyes, thinking, all I can do is my best. Multiple shots pierced his body. Blood flowed freely from his wounds, and he could faintly hear the desperate calls of, Doctor! 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 As darkness encroached upon him, his last thought was a firm affirmation of his identity, Yes, I'm Dr. Jean. The world faded into darkness. In this abyss, Dr. Jean felt a profound pain, as if his entire body had been brutally assaulted. Is this what death feels like? He wondered. Suddenly, the surroundings changed. Jean found himself in a dense forest. Glancing at his hands, he realizes they are much smaller. Panic sets in when he recalls his previous predicament, didn't I die back there? Where am I now? Why am I so young? The metallic scent of blood was overpowering. Looking around, a gruesome scene greeted him, a battlefield littered with corpses and demolished vehicles. Pinching himself, he tries to ascertain if it's a dream. The smell of fresh blood confirms the grim reality. Panicking, he wondered, wasn't I just dead? Why am I a child now? His mind raced as he tried to make sense of the scene. He observed the corpses, noting their unusual clothing in the lack of bullet wounds. The clean cuts on some bodies puzzled him, what kind of sword can cleanly slice a person in half? It's almost as if I've fallen into a murum world. Gazing into the distance, a mountain loomed, and Jean sat next to a dead body, contemplating, this isn't the desert where I met my end, nor is it Korea. To make things stranger, I now inhabit the body of a young child. He carefully examined the scene, noting the empty wagons nearby, were these people ambushed by bandits? Examining the body next to him, he realized it was still fresh. A feeling of urgency gripped him. He needed to leave before the assailants returned. 
Amidst the stillness, a faint cry for help punctured the air. Dr. Jin's ears perked up, and hope surged within him. Could it be? Is someone still alive amidst this devastation? Without a moment's hesitation, he sprinted towards the voice. Coming upon a gravely injured man, he blurted out, Hold on, sir. Can you hear me? With tremendous effort, the man's lips quivered, Young one, if I don't make it, please, hand this to my wife. She, she still needs it. Dr. Jin's eyes sharpened with determination. Let's focus on stopping that bleeding first. Swiftly, he repurposed his own clothes, pressing them against the gaping wound to stem the blood flow. As he worked, he marveled internally, it's almost miraculous. Such a deep wound, yet no vital organs damaged. However, the situation was dire. The man had lost a significant amount of blood. Scanning the area, Dr. Jin's gaze landed on the bag the injured man had mentioned earlier. He hastily rummaged through it, hoping for a medical miracle. And there it was, a bundle of needle and thread. A spark of relief flashed in his eyes. This will do, he whispered, more to himself than anyone else. But he was realistic, there's no way to sterilize this, but it's our only chance. Preparing the injured man, he cautioned, brace yourself. This is going to sting. With steady hands, Dr. Jean began sewing the wound shut. Every pull of the thread was a step closer to hope. Once done, he took a moment to appreciate the man's resilience, you did brilliantly, he praised. The wounded man, through pain-glazed eyes, murmured a weak, thank you. Drawing a deep breath, Dr. Jean somberly conveyed, I've done what I could, but without proper sanitation, there's a risk of infection. You need to be careful. As Dr. Jean was repacking the bag, a tiny pair of baby shoes caught his eye. The weight of their significance hit him, they belonged to an unborn child, waiting for a father to come home. His hands trembled, feeling the profound determination of a husband, desperate to return to his expecting wife. Closing the bag and handing it back to the wounded man, he urged with emotion-laden eyes, fight for them. Live for your family. The scene transitioned, revealing a tireless Dr. Jean attending to yet another injured person. By now, he had treated three individuals, the weight of the day pressing heavily on his young shoulders. A pang of nostalgia hit him, he recalled the challenges he faced as an adult in his previous life. And now, trapped in a child's body, the physical strain was taking its toll. Yet, his spirit remained unyielding. Glancing around, a thought struck him, could there be others? More souls in need of aid? Determined, he rose to his feet, searching intently for signs of life amidst the carnage. Some shallow breaths and faint moans reached him. I can help, I can give them a fighting chance, he pondered, a surge of adrenaline pushing away his fatigue. They might not survive long without proper care. But I can't dwell on that now. My duty is clear. His resolve strengthened, and his thoughts echoed loudly in his heart, I will save them. It's who I am. I am a doctor. In the mystical realm of Murim, a land rife with martial arts and age-old secrets, an unexpected presence emerges. Dr. Jean, a man of medicine from another world, finds himself in the midst of chaos. A delivery group, bearing crucial cargo, has fallen victim to the ruthless ambush of marauding bandits. Drawn to a fallen body, Dr. Jin's trained eyes immediately discern the dire state of the injured. Life essence, in the form of precious blood, has been spilled too generously upon the earth, leaving the body cold and lifeless. An intense pang of regret gnaws at Jin's heart. Despite his vast knowledge and skilled hands, the cruel hands of fate had acted swifter, leaving him powerless and deeply aggrieved by his inability to intervene in time. Amidst the chaos and the heavy air of despair, Dr. Jin's sharp mind began to churn, pulling him back to the foundational principles of emergency care. The harsh, unforgiving doctrine of triage, determining who might see another dawn and who was beyond the realm of human intervention. As he sifted through the fallen, a glimmer of hope emerged. He managed to single out a few whose breath still danced on the precipice of life and death. But to his dismay, he could only rally a mere three to the side of the living. 
The weight of frustration bore down on him, a cruel irony, a doctor amidst the dying, rendered almost powerless without his trusted medical instruments. However, as destiny would have it, a peculiar sight caught his eye. Partially obscured beneath a lifeless body fluttered a piece of fabric resembling a flag. He gently unveiled it to reveal the emblematic words, Cloud Dragon Secure Delivery. Recognition flashed across Jin's face. Legend spoke of such a group in the tales of Murin, an elite assembly that would transport anything, for anyone, provided the price was right. Could the stories truly be rooted in reality? If indeed he was ensnared within the fabled Murum world, and if these fallen were part of the renowned Secure Delivery Group, then hope was not entirely lost. Somewhere, in the vast expanse of this unfamiliar world, a rescue team might just be charting their course towards them. In the dimming light, Dr. Jin's gaze settled on a discarded sword, its blade tarnished by the cruel actions of the bandits. With an idea forming, he seized the weapon and began to furiously rub it against a nearby stone, each strike evoking sparks in the gathering darkness. The knowledge from his army days, once relegated to mere memories, now surged forth, proving invaluable in this world. He quickly scavenged for wood and bits of cloth strewn around the site, fashioning them into a makeshift shelter. With care and urgency, he transported the trio he had managed to salvage from the brink of death into the safety of the tent. The cool embrace of the evening breeze and the flickering glow of the fire he had started provided a stark contrast to the chaos from earlier. As the silhouette of the tent stood firm against the night, Dr. Jean exhaled deeply, a mixture of exhaustion and the small triumph of the moment washing over him. Under the vast canopy of the evening sky, Dr. Jin's eyes trailed the myriad hues of twilight, lost in deep contemplation. The flickering stars above seemed to echo the flicker of hope in his heart, hope that the rescue team would indeed arrive. The weight of solitude pressed upon him, urging him to descend the mountain, to escape the looming shadows and the dangers they might conceal. Yet, as his gaze shifted to the three vulnerable souls he had fought so fiercely to save, a wave of responsibility washed over him. The thought of abandoning them felt like a heavy stone in his chest, impossible to shake off. He dropped to his knees, feeling the cold earth beneath his palms. In that quiet moment, it became clear to him, his healer's heart could not be swayed, for, in his core, he was, and always would be, a doctor. As darkness draped the land, the gentle whisper of the night breeze seemed to carry with it the echoes of his younger self, the dreams and desires of a boy wanting more from life. Dr. Jean found himself seated on the cool ground, lost in the memories of days long past. Becoming a doctor wasn't just a career choice for him, it was his ticket to respect and recognition. Growing up an orphan, the title of doctor was like a badge of honor, proof that he had risen above the challenges life had thrown his way. But as he looked back, those accolades and achievements felt distant and hollow. The tragic turn of events, getting embroiled in a civil war during a volunteer mission, and the ultimate sacrifice he made for a young child, overshadowed his earlier pursuits. In the stillness of the night, an unsettling rustle broke the silence. Could it be wolves? In this unpredictable Murum world, anything was possible. If bandits roamed free, why not wild wolves? Fear took over, and he began to panic, tears streaming down his face. He clutched tightly to the flag bearing the emblem of the Cloud Dragon Secure Delivery, his voice quivering as he called out, Rescue Team, where are you? Cloud Dragon Delivery, please be real. Then, a flicker of memory pierced through his anxiety. The name, Cloud Dragon Secure Delivery, wasn't it from that novel, Supreme Demon King, he had devoured in his previous life. The realization both comforted and confounded him. The distant rumble of hooves grew louder, building into a thundering cacophony that shook the ground beneath. A wave of anxiety washed over him. What's happening? He stammered, eyes darting around as he stood in front of the tent. Someone's approaching. Bracing himself, uncertainty consumed him. Could it be the rescue team? Or perhaps the feared bandits? But as the dust settled and the cavalry came into view, a familiar flag fluttered in the wind, 
Cloud Dragon secure delivery. Relief washed over him and he burst into relieved laughter. The rescue team, they actually came, he exclaimed. In the face of danger, hope had arrived, and with it, salvation for him and the patients. As the cavalry drew nearer, he noticed the distinct design of one of the wagons. It was massive and bore a resemblance to a medicine cabinet, unlike any he'd seen before. A memory flashed, the godly Dr. Bacon's medicinal wagon, he murmured. The sight of the wagon pulled him back to another place, another time. The scene shifted, revealing him engrossed in a Murim novel, lost in its enthralling tales. A co-worker interrupted his reading, raising an eyebrow at the Supreme Demon King title. But he only replied with a smirk, How about you mind your own business and let me enjoy my favorite pastime? To his co-workers, it seemed like a yawn, but for him, it was pure gold. Returning to the present, he marveled at the unfolding reality that seemed all too similar to the novel he cherished. Is this, a coincidence? He pondered. But as the cavalry man cried out, My lord, we've found a survivor. Dr. Jean was left awestruck, struggling to separate fiction from the reality unfolding before his eyes. In the warm embrace of the vast sky, painted with the gentle strokes of a sunset's glow, an eagle floated with elegance. High above, its keen eyes observed an unfolding scene below, the arrival of a massive cavalry. As the troop approached a designated spot, there stood Dr. Jean, isolated and anxious, eagerly awaiting a rescue team. His gaze locked onto the advancing cavalry. His features, usually calm and composed, were now contorted with shock. Among the sea of soldiers, one figure stood out. He wanted a search conducted for any additional survivors in the vicinity. As the big man's gaze swept the area, it landed on a heart-wrenching sight, a lone boy, no older than a child, standing unwaveringly before a tent. Around them lay the harrowing aftermath of a battlefield, yet this boy seemed untouched by the horrors surrounding him. Walking over, the leader stood before the child, casting a massive shadow over him. Despite his intimidating presence, the man's voice was gentle as he introduced himself, I am Wunyo Haiyan, Lord of the Cloud Dragon Secure Delivery. A pause followed as he then inquired about the boy's name. I am Jean Chion He, the boy responded, maintaining his composure. Lord Woon, in spite of his formidable appearance, seemed genuinely kind-hearted. He commented on Jin's unique name and admired his calmness amidst such chaos. Curiosity piqued, he then asked Jean about the tent and its purpose. Jean, with a heavy heart, explained that he had been tending to the injured within. Lord Woon's eyes widened in astonishment. Without wasting a moment, he rushed inside the tent. What he found left him breathless, three critically injured individuals, painstakingly cared for by the young Dr. Jean. Alarmed, Lord Woon urgently called for, the godly doctor. Hearing the title, godly doctor, spoken aloud, Dr. Jean found himself in a state of sheer astonishment. It was a term straight out of legends and, in his case, a novel he was all too familiar with. As he stood there, trying to process this incredible moment, he saw a figure gracefully emerge from a cabinet, a figure that carried the esteemed title of the godly doctor. This was no ordinary doctor, this was the white dragon godly doctor, revered and held in the highest regard, and one of the legendary three heavenly doctors. His name, Bacon, translated to, white dragon, was a nod to his distinctive white hair, which cascaded down and bore a striking resemblance to the scales of a mythical white dragon. Despite being male, his beauty was undeniable, captivating the hearts of all who laid eyes on him. Dr. Jean, with his mouth agape, could hardly believe the scene unfolding before him. The godly doctor, in flesh and blood, was exactly as described in the novel he had read. This realization struck him like a bolt of lightning, leading him to a startling conclusion. He wasn't just in any world, he was in the world of the novel, the novel, Supreme Demon King, he had immersed himself in, a Murim world filled with martial artists and mystical adventures. This wasn't just any Murim world, 
This was the Murum world from Supreme Demon King, the very novel he had finished reading shortly before his untimely death. And the white dragon Godly Doctor, a pivotal character in the story, stood before him now. The novel narrated an epic tale where the white dragon Godly Doctor plays a crucial role in saving the main character, Yeo Harayan, when the cloud dragon secure delivery is ambushed. A complex web of events unfolds between the Doctor and Yeo Harayan afterwards, but ultimately, the Godly Doctor meets a tragic end, succumbing to a disease in the second book of the series. Dr. Jean was left standing there, struggling to comprehend the surreal turn of events. The character he had read about, mourned for, was now right before his eyes, alive and breathing. It was a moment of both shock and wonder, as fiction and reality blurred into one. As Dr. Jean grappled with this realization, the godly doctor entered the tent, his eyes quickly taking in the situation. He paused, noticing the stitches that Jean had performed. He brought out a box, extracted a creamy substance, and applied it to the stitches, enhancing the healing process. The leader of the group, carrying the weight of concern in his eyes, eagerly stepped forward. He needed to know, were they going to make it? But the godly doctor, his eyes sharp and knowing, had a question of his own. Who tended to these wounds? He asked, his voice steady. Jean felt a lump form in his throat as the leader, Wun Yo Hyun, looked his way. Taking a deep breath, he gathered his courage and responded, It was me. The words hung in the air, simple yet filled with weight, as everyone awaited what would come next. The godly doctor, Bakrin, was visibly impressed. What an impressive suture. Thanks to your proper treatment, they will survive. The praise from such a revered figure left the group in awe, their admiration for Dr. Jean evident as they murmured amongst themselves, praising his ability to remain calm under pressure and treat such severe injuries. Jean Chion He, however, remained focused on the task at hand. He simply wanted to save lives. Bakrin gave him a small, approving smile, recognizing the young doctor's dedication. Meanwhile, Wun Yo Hyun made a decision. He left half of his forces with Dr. Jean, trusting him to care for the injured while he and the others departed. The weight of this responsibility suddenly hit Jean, and he was left speechless, overwhelmed by the trust placed in him and the realization that Cloud Dragon Secure Delivery now owed him a debt of gratitude. Wun Yo Hyun promised to repay this debt, ensuring Dr. Jean that he would not forget the kindness shown to him and his family. As the scene shifted half forces moving towards Cloud Dragon secure service bases. Now in the company of the medical cabinet. A kettle of water boiled in the background, creating a soothing ambience as a young man conversed with his master, Bakrin. The boy expressed concern for Bakrin, noting his overexertion and the toll it had taken on him. Bakrin acknowledged the boy's worries, but he knew he had no other option. Cloud Dragon Secure Delivery had provided him shelter in his time of need, and he felt compelled to repay their kindness. The boy, attentive to Bakrin's needs, soaked a cloth in hot water and placed it on his master's forehead, offering a moment of reprieve. Their conversation continued, touching on the events that had transpired and Bakrin's decision to help leader Woon. The young boy couldn't hide his curiosity, asking if Bakrin was referring to Woon Yo Hyun. Bakrin confirmed, speaking with the wisdom of experience, noting the tragedy of losing a family member. The young man lightened the mood, pointing out that Bakrin had now repaid his debt to Cloud Dragon Secure Delivery. Bakrin smiled, acknowledging the truth in the boy's words. However, the young man couldn't ignore Bakrin's exhaustion, expressing his concern and highlighting the difficulty of controlling the nine clouded absolute pulses. Bakrin, resigned to his fate, admitted to his physical limitations, revealing his surprise at having lived past forty, a milestone he never thought he would reach. The young man, his voice filled with worry, implored Bakrin not to talk like that. Bakrin, touched by the boy's concern, made a heartfelt declaration. He wanted to take the young doctor, Jean Chion He, as his disciple. The boy was taken aback, aware of the implications of such a decision. 
Baekrin reassured him, acknowledging his own mortality but expressing his belief in Jean Chion He's worthiness. Despite his reservations, the boy couldn't argue with Baekrin's decision, his face a mix of exasperation and affection as he realized the futility of trying to change his master's mind. The air was filled with a distinct aroma, an aroma laden with memories from his childhood, the smell of herbs. As a child, he would often encounter this scent during his visits to the market. It was a familiar and comforting smell, one that he hadn't realized he had missed until this very moment. Lying in bed, the smell seemed to envelop him, urging him to rise. He responded to the call, attempting to sit up, but was immediately met with a sharp, unbearable pain in his chest. It was as if his very body was protesting, screaming out in agony, making it clear that he was not yet ready to move. Despite the pain, he couldn't help but notice the sunlight streaming in through the window, casting a warm glow across the room and illuminating everything in its path. The room was modest, furnished with just the essentials, including two beds. His observations were abruptly interrupted as the door opened, revealing a man accompanied by a group of people. The man, seeing him attempting to rise, quickly urged him to lie back down and rest. His words were gentle, filled with concern. The young man was struck dumb, his pain momentarily forgotten as he realized who had just entered his room. It was the, white dragon godly doctor, himself. A figure of immense respect and renown. Surrounded by a throng of onlookers whose gaze bore into him with intensity, Dr. Jean finds himself at the center of attention, his mind racing with questions and curiosity. His surprise is palpable, his thoughts drifting back to the child he had once treated, and the whereabouts of the other two individuals who had been present at that time. Curiosity getting the better of him, he found his voice and asked Bacrin, where am I right now? Bacrin's response was calm and assuring explaining that they were at one of the bases of the Cloud Dragon Secure Delivery Service and that Dr. Jean had slept through the entire trip there. As he spoke, Bacon couldn't help but think to himself how Dr. Jean, up close, had the looks of a celebrity. Seeing Dr. Jin's confused state, Bacon continued, sharing that Dr. Jean had remained semi-conscious throughout the journey, hence why they had let him rest. Despite the pain and confusion, Dr. Jean couldn't help but notice that Bacon was speaking to him using honorifics, a sign of respect that did not go unnoticed. He thought to himself how well-educated Bacon must be to use such polite language with someone as young as him. Breaking the silence, Bacon expressed his gratitude, acknowledging Dr. Jin's quick thinking and first aid treatment that had played a crucial role in saving everyone's lives. Dr. Jean, felt a wave of relief wash over him. Bacon continued, reassuring Dr. Jean that there would be no lasting side effects from the injuries and expressing the debt that both the Cloud Dragon Secure Delivery Service and the Noble Tribe owed him. The mention of the Noble Tribe caught Dr. Jin's attention, and he couldn't hide his surprise. Bacon nodded, affirming Dr. Jin's surprise. He reminded Dr. Jean of a lady with a sword strapped to her waist among the people he had saved, revealing that she was a daughter of the noble tribe. He further shared that she had been working with the Cloud Dragon Secure Delivery Service as part of her training. Bacon's voice grew deep and serious as he implied the gravity of the situation, stating that if Dr. Jean hadn't been there, the consequences would have been dire. Dr. Jin's mind racing with thoughts of the noble tribe, a clan he remembered as appearing later in a novel he had read. He wondered if the lady was a daughter of one of the heads of the noble tribe, but he quickly dismissed these thoughts, reminding himself that he had simply done what was necessary to save a life in need. He was lost in thought when a sudden jolt of pain brought him back to reality. He attempted to stand, but his body betrayed him, the pain in his chest overwhelming. Just as he was about to collapse, a young man, quick on his feet, caught him. Dr. Jean, still in a haze of pain, recognized the young man as General Yu Ho, a well-known servant of the White Dragon Godly Doctor. His mind made connections, recognizing the rarity of the string-dyed characters in the setting they were in. Yu Ho, concerned for Dr. Jin's well-being, urged him to be careful, reminding him that he needed rest. Despite his state, Dr. Jean, feeling a mix of gratitude and embarrassment, 
expressed how he had merely done what he could with his limited knowledge and skills. He was just glad to have been of some help. The room fell silent as everyone processed his words. They were taken aback by the maturity and depth behind his words, unexpected from someone of his young age. It was then that Bacon presented Dr. Jean with a box, a gift from the noble tribe as a token of their gratitude. The atmosphere grew tense as the box was opened, revealing its contents, a hundred-year pine medicine ball. The room was filled with gasps of astonishment. Dr. Jean, still trying to process everything, could only stare at the medicine ball, realizing that it must be something extraordinary to elicit such reactions from everyone around him. Bacrin, observing the scene, thought to himself how the noble tribe had really outdone themselves this time. He understood the depth of their gratitude, Dr. Jean had saved the life of Gong Sun Yang, a promising prospect and heir of the noble tribe. The godly Dr. Bacrin decided to take a moment, sitting down and placing a reassuring hand on Dr. Jin's shoulder. He knew the magnitude of the situation, realizing that even a gift as grand as the hundred-year pine medicine ball could be considered small given Gong Sun Yang's position in the noble tribe. Yet, he also knew that the others in the room were not fully aware of the gravity of the situation. Dr. Jean, still in pain and now utterly confused, couldn't help but feel overwhelmed. Oy vey, he thought, a Yiddish expression of dismay escaping his mind. He was struggling to make sense of everything, especially the medicine ball. If someone could just tell him its name, he might be able to guess its properties, but for now, he was left in the dark. Bacrin, noticing Dr. Jin's confusion, decided to offer some explanation. He shared that the medicine was particularly good for internal wounds and would also help alleviate his headache. He stressed the importance of taking the medicine as soon as possible, given the severity of Dr. Jin's injuries. Dr. Jin, still in pain and overwhelmed by the situation, decided to trust Bacrin's judgment. He reached for the pine medicine ball, ready to take it, reassuring himself that a patient should always listen to their doctor. As the medicine went down his throat, Dr. Jean could feel its effects instantly. A refreshing sensation enveloped his throat, and his head began to spin. Yuho, ever attentive, offered him another bottle of medicine to help him sleep. Bacrin, noticing the change in Dr. Jin's condition, requested everyone to leave the room to allow him to rest. The room quickly emptied, leaving only Bacrin, Yuho, and Dr. Jean. Once alone, Yuho couldn't help but ask his master if he truly intended to take Dr. Jean as his disciple. The master, known as the White Dragon Godly Doctor, responded affirmatively, yes. The pupil, taken aback by this revelation, expressed his uncertainty, I'm sure nobody would refuse to become the disciple of the Great White Dragon Godly Doctor, but, I'm worried. The master acknowledged the concern, echoing the sentiment, I'm worried as well that he will refuse. The pupil, surprised and intrigued, sought clarification, what do you? Master Bacrin, with a thoughtful expression, retrieved a sharp pin from his belongings, proposing a plan, perhaps some hard work will help me move his heart. The pupil, recognizing the value of what was being considered, questioned the decision, you're going to do such a precious thing for him. The master, with a decisive nod, confirmed his intentions, yes. As the pin made contact with Dr. Jin's forehead, emitting a red-orange ray, Dr. Jin felt something stir within him. The white dragon godly doctor watched on, a small smile on his face, as Dr. Jin began to sweat profusely. Yu Ho, observing the scene, couldn't decide whether to pity or envy Dr. Jin. As the room darkened, Dr. Jean found himself drifting into a dream, a dream where he was a butterfly. Unlike Xuanzi's butterfly dream, this was not a dream of happiness. Instead, he dreamt of pain and suffering, a nightmare that left him begging for it to end. When he finally awoke, back in the same room, drenched in sweat and breathing heavily, he realized something was amiss. The stench that filled the room was unbearable, and as he sat up, he made a shocking discovery, his clothes were gone. Confused and embarrassed, he couldn't help but exclaim, what's going on? Why the hell am I, I'm naked? 
Dr. Jean, our main character, found himself in a bewildering situation as he woke up. He was completely naked and a foul smell lingered in the air, assaulting his senses. Confusion painted his face as he saw two figures standing right beside him, patiently waiting for him to come to his senses. One of them was the esteemed white dragon godly doctor, and the other was a man named Yuho. As his mind started to clear, a thought struck Dr. Jean, white dragon godly doctor. Has he been nursing me throughout the night? This was surprising to him, as such menial tasks were typically delegated to servants, not someone of the godly doctor's high standing. The godly doctor, observing Dr. Jean, spoke with a calm voice, You have fared well. Your body has not accumulated much muddy chi. However, in that moment, Dr. Jean realized there was something strange on his back. It wasn't wet or liquid-like, it felt more like a dried-up chunk of rubber. This realization made him connect the dots, the rancid smell was probably coming from this substance. Bakrin, the godly doctor, continued to assess Dr. Jin's condition, asking him if he felt any discomfort. While Jean was still taking in the unusual sensation on his back, thinking it might be the source of the foul smell, he responded, surprisingly, I feel light. Refreshed, actually. He also took this moment to make a request, asking the godly doctor to speak to him in a more casual manner, as the formalities were making him uncomfortable. Sure, I can do that, Bakran responded with a smile, obliging his request. Dr. Jean felt a wave of relief and gratitude. Bakran then proceeded to examine Dr. Jin's back, prompting Dr. Jean to ask about the muddy chi he mentioned earlier. He was under the impression he was being treated for internal injuries, but this seemed to be something different. Bakran explained that he had performed a bone restructuring procedure to prepare Dr. Jean for learning martial arts. Bone restructuring procedure is a high-level process of cleaning the body of any, and all, toxic and impurities using a combination of QI and medical procedures. Dr. Jean was in awe, realizing this meant his blood vessels had been cleansed. But then, another thought struck him. Bakrin had mentioned martial arts. Was he going to learn martial arts? Bakrin, noticing that Dr. Jean was ready to move, instructed Yuho to help him clean up. Yuho gave a gentle smile, handing Dr. Jean a towel and helping him cover up. Dr. Jin's mind was racing. He realized that receiving a bone restructuring procedure from someone as eminent as the White Dragon Godly Doctor was no ordinary matter. It must be something far superior to what a normal doctor could provide. As Yu Ho left the room, Dr. Jean found himself alone, pondering why Bakrin would do such a thing for someone like him. Soon, he found himself in a luxurious bath, courtesy of the Cloud Dragon Secure Delivery Service, the powerful group that had taken him in. Dr. Jean reflected on his situation, realizing that he had been provided with the best facilities thanks to being labeled as the savior of the group. However, he had to be careful. Yu Ho had been asking him personal questions, and he had been evading them by feigning a headache. Now, with a wound already on his head, he decided it would be best to pretend to have lost his memory. What could they do if he played dumb? As he bathed, Yuho's stoic demeanor didn't waver. Dr. Jean understood. From Yuho's perspective, he was just a random kid who had received an incredibly precious medical procedure from the godly doctor. When Dr. Jean caught sight of his reflection in the water, he saw a child's body, and he realized the magnitude of the situation. Submerged in the warm embrace of the water, Dr. Jean allowed his thoughts to swirl and dance freely. The reality of his situation had finally started to sink in, as he contemplated his miraculous survival. In my previous existence, my life came to an end while saving another, he pondered, the irony of his circumstances not lost on him. But now, it's almost as if that selfless act has breathed life back into me. What an extraordinary twist of fate. His mind wandered to what could have been, had fortune not favored him that fateful day. Had it been a band of merciless rogues or ferocious wolves that stumbled upon me instead of the Cloud Dragon Secure Delivery Service, my fate would have been sealed. He shook his head, marveling at the precariousness of life. 
memories of his past life began to flood his consciousness, vivid and unrelenting. I lived a life devoid of familial warmth, love, or any kind of support. It was a life steeped in misery. Yet, there was a note of resilience in his reflection. Despite the circumstances, I gave it my all. I lived as fully as I could. He now found himself at a crossroads, pondering his next steps in this new existence. According to Yu Ho, anyone with a connection to my current identity has been mercilessly slaughtered by bandits. They were headed toward Sioju, his thoughts trailed off as he recalled the significance of that place. Sioju, that's the stronghold of the demon forces, isn't it? Insights from the book he once read began to resurface. The main character, Demon King Yeo Harayun, joins forces with the demons right there in Sioju. It's there that she faces numerous trials and tribulations, ultimately finding her strength and purpose. With a deep breath, he submerged himself fully in the water, allowing the coolness to envelop him as he embraced a moment of solitude. In the narrative of that book, I was just a nameless character, an extra who met a tragic end on the very first page. Furthermore I am an orphan, with no possessions or ties to the world. He couldn't help but reflect on his past life of servitude, working tirelessly for others and their families. Maybe now, after all these years, I've earned the right to think about having a family of my own. The practicalities of such a dream didn't escape him. To make that happen, I'll need resources, money. And in the ruthless world of Murim, where a human life is as fragile as a fly's, strength is paramount. His mind was clear as he emerged from the water, a determined glint in his eyes. I'm bound to find myself in the midst of chaos and danger. And if I can't even defend myself, how can I hope to protect others? Dr. Jean stepped out of the bath, feeling rejuvenated, the water droplets cascading down his skin as he moved. He approached the mirror, taking a moment to truly look at himself and ponder his current state of being. Here I stand, lacking both wealth and physical strength, he thought, his reflection staring back at him. In his eyes, a glimmer of determination sparkled as he continued to think, but what I possess is something quite unique and invaluable, foresight. I have a knowledge of the future, an insight into what's to come. This awareness filled him with a sense of empowerment, as he understood the weight and potential of this knowledge. And there's another thing, he reminded himself, a small smile playing on his lips. Doctors, with their healing touch and knowledge of medicine, are universally needed. It doesn't matter where I am, my skills and expertise as a doctor have a place. After taking a moment to gather himself and change into fresh clothes, Dr. Jean stepped out to meet Yuho, who had been patiently waiting for him outside. The transformation was apparent, and it took Yuho by surprise. He found himself questioning whether this was indeed the same young man he had seen just moments before. Not missing a beat, Yuho greeted him warmly, Young sir, you look refreshed. Warm tea has been prepared in the tea room. Please, follow me. As Dr. Jean fell into step behind Yu Ho, the latter couldn't help but assess the young man's condition. He possesses no inner chi, and his martial arts abilities are worse than those of children born into Murim clans, Yu Ho thought to himself, concern furrowing his brow. The master has declared that his skills are more than sufficient, but from my perspective, he's far from meeting the mark. If this child is to truly become his disciple, it could very well shorten the master's already limited time left. He realized that their scrutiny was open and unabashed, reminiscent of the way people had looked at him during his intern days. Being so openly wary of me, it's like deja vu, he thought, a hint of bitterness in his mind. They approached a large, traditional building adorned with intricate designs, its roof covered in green tiles. The elegance and grandeur of the building were undeniable, yet it did little to put Dr. Jean at ease. Inside, the stairs continued, and he couldn't shake the feeling that there was a specific reason for their intense scrutiny. There must be a reason why I'm attracting so much attention, he mused, his mind racing as he tried to make sense of the situation. As Dr. Jean sat contemplating the intense gazes that continued to pin him, 
two waiters gracefully approached his table, placing a pot of tea and a plate of biscuits before him. The warm aroma of the tea filled the room, but Dr. Jin's thoughts were elsewhere. Now that I reflect on it, he pondered, the white dragon godly doctor never performed a bone restructuring procedure for anyone in the novel. Could it be the reason why I've been under such scrutiny? It's plausible. His thoughts raced as he pieced the information together. In the novel, a bone restructuring procedure is said to consume a vast amount of inner chi. If I've indeed undergone such a procedure, it spells trouble for the white dragon godly doctor. It's written that he was suppressing a grave illness with his inner chi. Taking actions like this was what led to his untimely death early in the book. Such self-sacrifice for the sake of another is a rare and commendable act. He was caught in a whirlpool of emotions, feeling a mix of gratitude and concern for the doctor. I can recall every detail of the novel, and coupled with my expertise in modern medicine, perhaps there's a way to aid him. His gaze landed on the plate of biscuits in front of him. A realization hit him hard. But first, I need to deal with these so-called refreshments. His mind flashing back to a particular scene from the novel. Chi dispersing poison in the biscuits. A clever strategy from the demon clan. They plan to plant a spy, get the members of the Cloud Dragon Secure Delivery Service addicted, and then strike when they were weak. A faint smirk played on his lips as he thought, but I won't let that happen.